I'm Ramona Wang. Thank you so very much for joining me for this week's program of Connect. My guest today is Katie Martinez. She is from a small Iowa town called Cheryl, Iowa, and she has had God's dream in her heart for a long time to be a fashion designer. Katie now lives and designs in New York City. Today, you have an opportunity to connect with her. Her line is ElegantTees.com, and we've got a fashion show in store for you. So sit back, relax, and get inspired on how you or a woman in your life can look both modest and elegant. You will want to connect with Katie Martinez. Don't go away. My clothing line is Elegant Tees. It's basically a merger, marriage of the word elegant and tees put together. Um, that's essentially the concept. Modest clothing, they're all elegant styles. They're as easy to put on as a t-shirt. I'm wearing one of them. This is called the Abigail style. It's really as easy to wear as a t-shirt. Um, the only thing is it's got some beautiful ruffles down the middle. It's a nice little elegant detail. All my shirts are focus on details and that's what makes them really easy to wear and you can also accessorize them by putting jewelry or tucking them in with the wearing a belt um, there's a lot you can do to just to just dress up your outfit but as long as you have the basic modest ensemble you can go anywhere with that and look just as lovely and beautiful as ever uh, I named these shirts after women who inspire me this is named Abigail because Abigail is known for her humility and um, just her grace. And this tea just reminds me of that. One thing I love about designing is using great color. We're going to have Brittany come out and she's wearing a raspberry color. Um, this, is, this tea is called the Yaritza. I named these after women who inspire me and Yaritza is one of my friends in New York. And she is a Latino girl. Um, you probably tell by the name. This it definitely fits her personality. And I actually designed this while I was listening to um, a reggaeton favorite called Puedo Imaginarme, which means I can only imagine in Spanish. Thanks, Brittany. Nicole is modeling a style called Harper, which has a lot of funkiness going on with the sleeve here. But there's also a twist with the elegant cowl neckline. The cowl neckline is just the, something I really love to do because it, it makes the shirt extremely elegant, but you'd never guess that this is t-shirt fabric while you're looking at it. Nicole is also wearing it with a uh, tucked in. Um, wearing it with uh, fun pants is always a nice way also to change your outfit and make it. Deb is modeling Yuritza in the other colorway, which is an umpire green. Uh, her necklace is by Amy and Every Designs. All these shirts that you've seen so far are under $30, so they're very affordable and they're for a great cause. Welcome to this week's program of Connect. I'm Ramona Wink, and my guest this week is Katie Martinez. Katie, thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you, Ramona. And welcome. It's a great joy for me to have Katie. I met her at a Christian Women's Club meeting where she was um, showcasing her fashion line. And today we have a fashion show in store for you. And you're going to be so inspired about not only the clothes that she has designed, but really her heart behind those clothes. Katie is a very strong Christian and will also share her personal testimony today. And again, we're just really excited that you can connect with Katie. As with every program of Connect, we always start with prayer. So would you join me now for prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you through your son, Jesus, and we're just really thrilled to have Katie here today and her models. You have gifted her with such a passionate heart for you and for helping people in need, and you have also gifted her with an extreme um, eye for elegance and, and a way to bring that to fruition and to help women feel so very beautiful in very modest and elegant clothing. Heavenly Father, again, we just commit this time to you. We know that, that people will be so very touched by Katie 
Katie's personal story and her um, uh, the work that you have called her to do. So again, be with us, lead us, and guide us, and may you be glorified in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. I also then asked Katie for a passage of scripture that she uh, wanted me to read on Connect, and so she took me to Hebrews 6:19. I'm going to start in verse 13 to give you um, the background on this. And God's promises bring hope. And again, one of the the uh, dresses that you'll see uh, that Katie has designed is called the hope dress. So I'll start there. For example, there was God's promise to Abraham, and since there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you richly, and I will multiply your descendants into countless millions. Then Abraham waited patiently. Katie mm -hmm. has waited patiently, and he received what God had promised. When people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it, and without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can now take new courage, for we can hold on to his promise with confidence. Here's the verse that is very meaningful to Katie, Hebrews 6, 19. This confidence is like a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain of heaven into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us, and he has become our eternal high priest. We praise that reading of God's word. Well, again, I'm very blessed to know um, some of Katie's story. And again, I would just like Katie to introduce herself today. Her models are in the audience and some of our studio audience people from Walk the Walk. And we're very blessed to have her mom with us, too. Katie grew up in Little Cheryl, Iowa, which is a town of how many? Um, it's got to be less than 20. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think our nearest neighbor is about a mile away. Okay. So when I moved to New York, it was quite... The change. Quite an experience. <laughs> so again, a, a girl from Cheryl, Iowa, has um, found God's calling and is now established in New York City. And today, you're going to hear about Katie's story. You're going to hear about um, some of the work that she is doing and, and reaching out to help people all across the the globe. And then you're going to see some of her very beautiful clothing line that you can order online. Her mom is here, and she does all the shipping for Katie, which is wonderful. And again, um, we're just really excited to tell you about that. We do want to start with them um, just by letting our audience connect with you, Katie. So you might give a little um, brief summary on how you came to know the Lord. And you kind of told me that a couple minutes ago before we started, and, and it's a really wonderful story. Uh, well, I grew up, I guess, kind of feeling like an outcast because I was teased a lot when I was, you know, growing up. So um, I, I guess the teasing went on for until I was about in the eighth grade. Um, and I really was desperate to fit in and feel accepted by all my peers. So I thought that maybe changing the way that I dressed could you know, change my status in school. So I started to um, dress immodestly and showing off you know, my body. And um, I did get attention. But it, fortunately, it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I got a lot of disrespect. And basically, when I was in about the, the 11th grade, this guy from school, he, he came up and was telling me about uh, accepting Jesus as your Savior. And I really, it was a new concept to me. I didn't really right. hear he about said, that. He said, do you, are, are you saved or do you know about salvation? And you really had never heard those terms before. That was new to you. didn't. Yeah. I didn't. And he shared with me John 3.16. And um, I'm like, wow, a guy that actually reads the Bible, the like, Bible. can quote it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I thought that was really cool. Um, but I, I couldn't just take his word from it that, you know, just believing was enough to, you know, be a Christian and be accepted into heaven. So he told me, well, if you can't take my word for it, just read about it. It's all right there. So I read the Gospel of John, and I accepted it, and it... Yeah. It really changed my life. Amen. Um, and you were 16, is that right? 16. 16. And again, um, as a young girl, um, so many young women go through that time where they feel unaccepted for whatever reason, Katie, mm -hmm. and then they make adjustments 
um, to try to find acceptance and many times it's with their clothing and then they have that same experience and so you found a way to um, find who you are in Jesus and then we'll talk about that um, a little bit later on but that I think is a perfect segue into our first line of models because again as a young girl you um, knew what it was like to dress very immodestly and then when you started designing fashion um, clothes you wanted to have women know that they could dress very elegantly and very modestly so I think this first um, group of ladies um, are going to be uh, modeling casual elegance is that right yes okay great so let's bring them out well, that was awesome, and again, we hope that that really inspires you. You can order any of those um, um, T-shirts or anything or those tops online, and again, we will put Katie's website um, up throughout the show. And again, they were just beautiful. Those models all look so very nice. They are. They're wonderful women. Wonderful women. Wonderful women. Again, I was blessed to meet some of them at that Christian Women's Club when they were modeling, and, and um, again, we might mention that the top I'm wearing is one of yours, and that's great. I bought that at that meeting and um, love it, and so I guess I could add my two cents in, too, that it's a wonderful line and, and it does make you feel very elegant. Our next um, portion that we really want to get into um, the interview about, Katie, is about um, the work that you are doing to um, um, eliminate sex trafficking. And I'd really like to delve into how you got um, to know about that. I think there are still so many people who don't even have a concept of what sex trafficking is, tra sex mm. trafficking is and then how you got inspired to make a difference. Well, when I was uh, a college student in New York, I learned about sex trafficking through a world affairs class and it was really shook me a place inside of me and um, I learned about these girls that get stolen from their families or they come from broken families so they're more vulnerable to mm -hmm. be taken by pimps and they're trafficked into different countries that they don't even know where they are and they end up um, being raped um, a lot and they're basically in bondage right and does this happen in a certain area of the world Katie or or is it um, all over would you say or is it primarily in one area it's all over it's very common in Cambodia and okay. Thailand but um, it's it's really everywhere even mm -hmm. in the United States yeah we're yeah. hearing all kinds of reports and it's very scary and people have no knowledge and so I'm very thankful that you took that college class and and your yes. eyes were not only open but like you said something really was stirred in, in your spirit and you wanted to make a difference mm -hmm. and so let's talk about that what did God put on your heart to do well when I was a college student I was like I wish I could do something right but I was a college student right. exactly <laughs> so after I graduated college I was working in the fashion industry and more on the business end and before I knew it doors opened for me to start my own clothing line and I designed I created the brand to be elegant tees elegant styles as easy to wear as a t-shirt and um, I saw that there was a lot of potential with it and I decided that you know what as this as this goes into work I want this business to somehow help the victims help the survivors uh, help free them and uh, basically, I made this covenant that the dividends would benefit this cause. Right. Um, so as I've been building this business for the past two years, uh, it's been quite an adventure. <laughs> I've been learning just a lot about modesty, too, and just more, more just how to design that flattering uh, designs for all types of bodies. Yeah. And um, just to make it so uh, it's... Elegant, affordable, you know, Elegant to, and affordable. And to make every woman feel beautiful. And I right. think that's what you really pull off is that you, um, your clothes make every woman, uh, regardless of body type or size, mm -hmm. feel really elegant and beautiful. And I think that's wonderful. That's when you were um, having God put that on your heart that you really wanted to help the survivors and, and really do something and make a difference, did you tell anybody about that? Did you talk to college friends who might have had um, a similar passion? Did you tell your family um, back here or, or was it just your kind of um, emotional quest that you were going to go on by yourself? Well, I didn't really know how it would pan out. Right. I just took that step of faith and um, I was living back here in, in Iowa when I started it. So I went home to pay New York rent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> and I, it just really kind of took off. A lot of uh, women here in Dubuque know about the brand and they have the brand and they love it and they're so supportive and that's been incredibly encouraging. Um, I moved back to New York though because I 
was in love with the man who's now my husband. Uh, but it's great being back in New York too. There's so much inspiration and the industry is there and it, it's, it's a great place to be. So many opportunities for you there. When people find out um, the basis for the line, that you really mm -hmm. do have a passion and, and like you told me before the interview in a couple of years, you're really hoping that it can um, be self-sustaining and those kind of things. As people find out that, that really the, the proceeds are helping people who have been victims of sex okay. trafficking, um, does that excite people? Do Have you had people say, oh, Katie, I really want to help you because you are doing this? Yes. And that's been, honestly, such a gift from God mm -hmm. because there's no way that a single person can transform a clothing line into right. something so big that it is making a difference, really. Um, it's not possible without you know, all the women who, who support it through purchasing it or the women right. who tell their friends about it. And that's just been, I think, the most encouraging thing yeah. because I don't have a lot of money to sure. spend on marketing and right. just the word of mouth has been so encouraging. Well, and that's why we're really excited to have you here because we can help encourage people to know about it. Um, let me ask you, Katie, have you ever met, have you ever had an encounter with a woman who has survived or have you had any personal stories about women who have, again, maybe had a friend if it wasn't them, but, but a personal story of, of someone impacted by sex trafficking? Uh, I know that in Nepal there is sex trafficking mm -hmm. and um, when I heard about it and I, was, I got connected to a group who is trying to bring sustainability to women that have been rescued. There is a, a nonprofit in Nepal that is, has been rescuing women from sex trafficking for over 20 years now. The girls are stolen and they are they attempt to bring them across the border into India and then into the Middle East where they work as slaves. Um, so they are stopping them at the border. If there's anything that looks suspicious, they'll stop it, question them, and bring them into a safe house. Once they're in the safe house, they give them the opportunity to um, learn job skills and receive counseling, which I think is so important mm -hmm. once that something so tragic has happened to you. And a lot of sometimes they could just go back home if they were from a great family and they they have a good you know base there but the idea is to bring sustainability right. to them right. so they've been teaching them sewing skills and the coolest thing is is that as we've connected i'm starting to sew some of my styles in nepal and, and I heard you say that um, earlier, and so again, uh, we're going to bring out uh, the same models again. We are so thankful to these three beautiful women. We're going to bring out the, the, them modeling. Um, you originally called it um, work career clothes, but I think they're elegant in that. Two people mm -hmm. could certainly wear them to work, but let's bring out our three models again and, and show off some of these styles, and, and uh, so stay with us. Brittany is modeling the Hope dress, which is the first style that we produced in Nepal. It comes in lavender, and I believe we still have some black ones online. Did I mention the price is only $44.90? This is the highest price item that we've ever had online. Uh, elegant tees are affordable, and that's part of uh, what's important to me, is being able to offer styles that are affordable for everyone. Deb is wearing another modest ensemble. This is the Jolie. It means pretty in French, which is why I named this style Jolie. It looks great with a statement necklace. Nicole is modeling one of the draped sweaters that I made. This is actually made out of t-shirt fabric. It's got gorgeous holiday inspired buttons down the middle. One of the nice things about elegant tees is a lot of them are very drapey, so they just flatter your figure. They look beautiful, Katie. They look beautiful. That was just awesome. So again, we are just so thankful to those um, three models. And again, you talked about in um, before the models came out that you're doing some sewing in Nepal. So talk to us about that. The women there um, have been learning how to sew, mm -hmm. and it's such a blessing because we we pay them fairly. Mm -hmm. It's a fair trade business. Um, one of the challenges, though, has been the logistics because they're in Nepal, right. I'm here in the States, right. and they're not from an industrialized nation. Yeah. Like China, it's easy to do business with because they already have all the technology, the computers, sure. the machines, you know, everything already set up and the factory plan and everything is already established. So for us to figure out the efficiency of it has been the, the biggest holdup, I think, in the past year mm -hmm. since we've connected. Sure. So we've 
got inspiration and just ideas to, to make it available for us to produce. And now that, now that that's possible, um, I'm planning on going to I Nepal. I was just going to say, have you been to Nepal? <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, you um, should be. The, the trip is, we're planning on going in, in March. Good. And um, in November, I'm going to meet again with the man, who, Ramesh, who has been rescuing these girls for, for 20 years. Oh, my. Can you imagine how um, he must feel every night when he goes to bed, um, how blessed he must feel that he has been one that God has used to rescue women? I mean, again, what a humbling um, yeah. effect that must have on his life. So, again, going to Nepal, how long will you be there? Probably for at least a week. Okay. Um, we're starting to, I'm actually planning out my spring line right mm -hmm. now. Good. So it's fun designing, of yeah. course, and trying it on friends and seeing how it looks on them. Great. But um, we'll be sending that fabric there and they'll sew it. And I would just love to be there with the process and, and use some of my uh, background in the fashion industry and the production and the business end sure. to help make the flow yeah. smoother. How is the language barrier? Uh, well, I've been communicating mostly with... Uh, the the people that have been working with them okay. this whole time but um, Ramesh speaks very good English okay so that won't be a problem yeah. so again um, in the next let's say three to five years Katie where do you see um, God really taking um, oh. you and and this line and 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 if you could tell us what your dream and your goal um, in the next foreseeable future what would that look like well I uh, I believe strongly in modesty and that's the design mm -hmm. initiative mm -hmm. with the with the brand. Um, I would love to show, you know, on Facebook, on social media, on the website, just how you can style mm -hmm. your clothes. Um, sometimes when people hear the word modesty, they think, oh, that's boring, um, or they think it's ugly, or they think it's ugly, they right? They think it's boring or ugly or not trendy, right? You know. So that's kind of where I'm trying to, as a designer, to bring a balance between mm -hmm. trendiness and looking beautiful and being modest at the same time. Mm -hmm. and um, Something that's pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I didn't have a daughter. I have an only son. But, um, you know, some of the, the clothes that, that young women especially wear today um, is so immodest. And, mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I just think, how in the world are they even leaving the home with that yeah. on? And so, again, I think it's a really wonderful statement that you are telling women of all ages from young to um, parenting age to grandparents um, <laughs> that you really can dress very modestly and look very cool and very beautiful and um, feel great and so I think that's a really wonderful thing. Have you heard back from um, women on how wearing your clothes has impacted their life? Have you heard stories of women that have said, Katie, you know, this really has um, helped me in how I view myself? And that's been one of the most amazing things in doing this. Um, there's so many women out there that do appreciate what I'm doing, right? And they think that it's great that it's affordable, and um, what what I consider in designing, and how the brand itself has also evolved over the past two years. Um, just learning more from women directly, you know, how does this look on me? How do I feel when I'm wearing it? Right. Um, and learning that that the right getting the right colors and finding the trends, but making the neckline a little higher so it's comfortable to wear. Mm -hmm. Shirts that are long enough so when you bend mm -hmm. down or when you're sitting down, mm -hmm. you don't feel like you have to adjust yourself all the right. time. Right, sure. And um, just, just learning over the past two years has been so helpful that as Elegant Tees does grow and takes off, I'll have it under my belt to be a reliable source for modest fashion and styling. Right. Well, and again, I think you've got such a gift to um, make women feel beautiful because, again, you are model thin. I mean, you're, you've got a model <laughs> body, um, and yet you make women of all sizes feel elegant. And I, think, and I think your line makes women feel elegant. And so I think that's really special about Katie, too, is that she's got a very um, beautiful uh, body and very thin. But again, um, um, I just witnessed at that style show that we did at the um, Stonecroft Women's, uh, there were women of all sizes, and they felt really, really yeah. good about themselves in their clothes. So I think that's awesome. Do you go to schools? The other thing that really strikes me about your story is that you had a dream in your heart mm -hmm. and, and you've really seen that come to pass. And so I think that's not only um, a message about the clothing itself, but a dream in your heart. Do you ever talk to young people in schools and, and youth groups about how if they've got a dream, they should really believe God that that will come to pass? Absolutely. If you have this, this burning desire inside of you and you know that this is something that 
um, has to be from God. If your motives are right and they're for Him, just try it. Open, you know, if the door is opening, go for it. When the factories in New York and yeah. the, re the financial resources were there to, for me to take a step of faith, mm -hmm. and it actually started to blossom into something that I, I, I couldn't even really imagine. Um, that has been just just proof that this is something that you should do. Um, I know that my gift is is was just given to me, so it's you should definitely do it if you can. Absolutely, and again, I think that you hit on a main point. Um, you had to take the human footsteps right. to do that. So many times, um, what do God, you have to lose? <laughs> right. But so many times, people are filled with fear or, mm -hmm. or whatever, and they they can't move past that. Uh, we'll continue that conversation. I know we've got the models coming out again in holiday line, mm -hmm. and so I want to get that in before we wrap up our time together. So let's have the ladies come out one more time. And as we all know, the holidays are coming up, and elegant teas are great for the holidays. We have a website, elegantees.com, and we have all kinds of different styles, all different colors. So something that you can find for yourself. Nicole is modeling a style called Kelsey. It has these really cute cutouts in the front. And she styled it with a high and low black chiffon pleated skirt with a embellished belt. Deb is wearing the Esther tee. I named this after the historical Esther that we all know and love. She is known for her strength and dignity, and this cowl neck just drapes so elegantly, and um, that's why I named it after Esther because I just love how it, um, it it looks, and it's one of those cowl necks too that you can feel modest in. Whenever I wear this and I bend over to pick up something, I don't have to worry about you know showing off anything that I don't want to. Uh, so I love this this shirt because it's it's very modest and elegant. Brittany is modeling one of our funnest holiday pieces that we've designed so far. It is called the Catrice because it's really edgy and it has cutouts on the shoulder with these bands. It's a great basic tee with a hint of like trendiness and funk. So anyone who loves fashion could wear this. Thank you so much for watching our, our fashion show and learning more about Elegant Tees. It has truly been an honor to be here today. Don't forget you can shop online and follow our Facebook page. For the holidays, you can pick up a gift card. You can also just check out some items for yourself. The website is ElegantTees.com, which is here on your screen. Katie, thank you so very much, and thank you, models. You all have looked beautiful today, and again, so inspiring to women who want to look elegant and modest. The holidays are coming up, and again, we pray that you will go on Katie's website and order a gift for yourself or someone else. And again, uh, we thank Katie and all these beautiful women for sharing their gift from God today. Thank you so very much for joining me for this week's program of Connect. I'll see you next week.